Hi, I'm Jill, and welcome to Intro to Opera, Part 2. Have you ever heard music and right away imagined a picture in your head that came from that music? Have you ever heard a song and thought, that sounds spiky or fluffy or smooth? If someone asked you, could you describe what color your favorite songs are? Well, the people who prepare operas for production do it all the time. We often think of the singers in operas, and they definitely create pictures out of the music by choosing how they move with the music they're singing, creating a picture with their body that goes along with the music. But there are lots of other people who work on operas besides the singers who paint pictures with opera. Stage directors create pictures to accent the music by coordinating where the actors go on stage. Scenic designers, lighting designers, and costume designers all work together to help create that picture on stage. Even graphic designers create posters and internet content that you see promoting these operas. Today, we're going to learn how to create pictures with the music we hear with the help of some opera singers as well as two artists from Oklahoma City. Each singer matched one of the arias that they like to sing with one of the artworks from the two artists. To each singer, the art helps describe what the music of their opera aria sounds like to them. Remember, an aria is a solo song from an opera. Let's get started. Our first singer is Mary. She chose this beautiful fabric painting, which she thought perfectly described the aria that she will sing. The aria is called O Zitra Nicht and is from an opera called The Magic Flute by Mozart. The painting is called Moonlight Frolic, and it was painted by Twilene Tepe. Listen closely and think about why Mary chose this painting to go along with her aria. Oh, 
Why do you think Mary chose that painting? What did you hear in the music that described the way the painting looked? What in the painting described the way the music sounded? Now, I want you to write down three connections that you made between the music and the painting. All done? Let's go find out what Mary thought. When I first saw Twilene's artwork, I was so inspired to sing the aria O Zitra Niche from Mozart's opera, The Magic Flute. This artwork displays the full moon with three beauties in a forest of velvety filigree. So I instantly thought of the characters in The Magic Flute, the queen of the night and the three ladies who are always awaiting her command. This aria takes place in a magical forest where the wicked queen of the night is upset that her daughter has been captured. She's singing to a young man whom she promises to let marry her daughter if he'll go rescue her. The queen starts the aria by saying, I was chosen to suffer because my daughter is gone. She then comes up with the brilliant idea and says, you will go rescue her and be her savior so she will be forever yours. Next up, I'm going to help you build a way to talk about visualizing music. I'm going to take some quick, short sections of music, some of it you maybe haven't heard, and some of it maybe you have, and you're going to think about them and describe them. I want you to know there are no right or wrong answers to this because music sounds different to everyone. If you're having a hard time coming up with some words though, I can give you some options. For instance, you can use any color to describe the music, like red, blue, green, pink, brown, black, or white, or purple, or rainbow, or anything that you can think of. You can use textures like smooth, bumpy, soft, fuzzy, or even shades like dark and light. All we want you to do is listen to the music and make these connections. Are you ready for the first one? Listen closely. It might be familiar to you. that sound to you? To me, it sounded bright. It sounded a little bit like rain or water. That is from Vivaldi's Four Seasons, and that song is called Spring. Are you ready for the next one? <laughs>
What did that one sound like to you? Maybe buzzing? Maybe something else? There are no right or wrong answers. But this song is called The Flight of the Bumblebee, and it's by Rimsey Korsakoff. This next song might be very familiar to those of you who like Star Wars. Are you ready? How did that sound to you? That was written by John Williams for the Star Wars series. Our next aria will be sung by Aubrey Chapin. She's singing Emily's Goodbye Aria from the opera Our Town. She chose a piece of art by Sam Charbonneau called April 2019. What do you think the music will sound like based on this picture?
Did that aria sound like you thought it would? If not, what picture would you draw to go with it? Let's find out what Aubrey thought. For this aria, a young woman named Emily sadly has died. She has given the chance after her death to go back and look in on the life that she used to live. She can't interact with any of the people she sees, but she gets to go back and look at her family members, places that she loved, and the things she used to enjoy. In the end, she has to return to her grave. I thought this aria really worked well with Sam Charbonneau's surrealist artwork. In the piece, we see a hazy scene of three figures emerging from a brighter background. We can't really see any details, just lots of shadows and black and white, but it looks like they are looking in on us kind of mysteriously. It reminded me of Emily in the aria looking in on the town where she grew up. It makes you wonder what the ladies are doing, what they are seeing, and why they are there. It almost feels as if you could reach out and touch them, but not quite, as if they are held back by something. I really enjoyed pairing this aria and piece of art together. It's not something I've done before, but I thought both of them had something to say about the other. I hope you enjoyed them too. As I mentioned before, sometimes music sounds like specific colors to us. Next up, you're going to hear Sky Singleton Baxter singing an aria called Regnava nel silenzio. But I'm not going to show you the picture first. You're going to listen to the aria and you're going to think about what colors come to mind when you're listening to it. Are you ready? Oh! 
colors did you hear in that aria? And I want you to know that there are no right or wrong answers. Here is the artwork that Skye thought matched up with her aria. This is Twilight Frolic by Twilene Tepe. The colors in it are white, brown, and light blue. What do you think? Let's go to Skye and see what she thought. And I'm singing an aria from the opera Lucia di Lammermoor by Donizetti. And it's actually a Scottish version, basically, of Romeo and Juliet. I don't know if you guys have heard the story of Romeo and Juliet, but they're star-crossed lovers. And that is exactly the same type of story in Lucia with Edgardo as her lover. And so these different uh, characters, they all kind of look like different versions of what I would see as Lucia in her life. And I love all the colors. The, the browns of the fabric are sort of her grounding, keeping her on Earth and this light blue background. You guys can kind of see the fabric. Um, the light blue background to me shows that even though it is a tragedy and she does die, um, that in heaven she will find peace and joy and true love. We've come to the last singer. This time we'll listen to the whole aria. Listen carefully and imagine the picture created by the sound of the music. What colors does it have? What words can you use to describe your picture? What is your picture about? After we listen to this aria sung by Laura Wardwell, you will need to write down three words describing what the music looks like. Then you'll get a chance to draw a picture that describes the music. You can use colored pencils, pens, crayons, markers, or even paint, anything you want to create your picture on the back of your worksheet. Oh. 
Okay. Now that the music is fresh on your mind, write down three visual words on your worksheet that describe the way the music sounds. After you've done that, it's time to show off your artistic skills. Turn your worksheet over and draw or paint on the back of it. We want to see a picture of what the music sounds like to you. Congratulations on doing your artwork. Whatever you did is wonderful. Again, there are no right or wrong answers to this. Would you like to see what I made? Let's go to Laura and see what she thought. So this piece of art is by Virginia Sitsis and it is a piece in vivid shades of blue and it has touches of every other color in the rainbow and it really reminded me of water because of the motion in the painting and then the sprinklings of other colors reminded me of like sunlight in the spring shining on the water and also there's some bubble like motion in the painting that reminds me of like being submerged underneath some water so the opera aria that I've chosen to go with this painting is from Sanson et Dalila by Camille Sanson and that would be the story of Samson and Delilah for those of us who were raised in Oklahoma. And this song is all about the beauty and coming to life of the earth in the springtime. Now, Delilah is very sad that Samson uh, is spending a lot of time leading his people, the Israelites, and he doesn't seem to notice her. So this song is something that she sings with Samson nearby for his benefit. She's trying to get his attention. So she's singing about the beauty of spring and she's saying that all of these things are wonderful and the earth is coming to life and there's blooming flowers and there's ripening fruits, but it's all in vain and it's all meaningless if I don't have the love of Samson. Now, why this song reminded me of this painting is because at the end of the aria, she says uh, that she would go down by the river. She's going to go down by the river and cry and cry her tears into the torrential waters of the river. And she's going to sit there and wait for Samson and she's going to wait for him to come love her. So this song reminded me of that vivid, uh, this painting, excuse me, reminded me of that vivid scene where she is celebrating spring, but she's also going down to the river and she's going to be infinitely sad without Samson and his love by her side. Well, we've come to the end of our lesson. Today, you learned how you can hear music and imagine pictures in your head. Maybe you learned some new words today to describe visually those songs that you hear. Maybe you learned a new way to describe those songs that you hear through art by creating your own art. And you learned how many different people come together to create the visual art that is opera. Thank you so much for joining us today. We want to see your artwork. If you want to share it with us, ask your parents to take a picture of it and send it to education at paintedskyopera.org. If you want to create more artwork from listening to opera, there are links to three different opera recordings on YouTube. Listen to them and create more art. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh!